Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Sunday morning, bright and early. Daily discipline, mind, body, and soul. This is how we get through. I wanna do a little study group for warriors. Every Sunday I do this. I study every single day. I follow a mind, body, and soul program, lifestyle management. This is what gets me through my PTSD. It's what gets me through addiction. It's what gets me through anxiety and depression. It's what gets me through the past, through all the pain of life, is to stay on top of my program every day. A lot of you aren't doing it. Many of you are really just on this channel to hear more stories about gangs and violence. I'll tell more of those as they, they arise. But today I just want to get into some study time. So, some of you cats may just want to check out. You may just want to turn the video off and go back to cuddling in your bed. Sleep in, it's Sunday, sleep late. The rest of us are going to study. Then we're going to get a workout done. Then we're going to eat some good food. So we'll be busy. By the time you wake up later today, we're going to already have all kinds of shit done. First thing that I wrote down that I want to go over is... Can we accept the human in our heroes? It's a good question. It's about expectations. Can we accept the human, put human in, in quotes, can we accept the human in our heroes? Can you accept the fact that your heroes are just humans like you, that they're not perfect? We accept this in movies. You know that Superman needs kryptonite. It's part of the plot. If kryptonite wasn't around, eh, the Superman character would be kind of boring because he would be all powerful. Some godlike creature that comes down and can just handle anything. It would, you'd, you'd watch an episode or something, but you'd get bored of it because you know the outcome. I mean, you know the outcome anyways, but you need those moments of Lex Luthor with his kryptonite saying, I got you, man of steel. Same with Batman. Batman gets tied up in every episode somehow and has to figure out how to escape. At least those are the old Batmans. Every great person that's ever existed has had flaws. If you pedestalize people, put them on a pedestal, they will always let you down. Living up to the expectations of others is impossible to do. You know how this is. Try to live up to the expectations of people around you. Your son, your wife, people at work. You can't live up to certain expectations. Some people have these crazy expectations of perfection and you're not perfect. You will always let them down if they expect perfection. I know this for myself. If you think that somehow I'm some perfect guy, I have to do is watch my videos, find out how fucked up I am. But if, if you know, if people start to think that I'm some kind of hero without flaws, without a weakness, that's a recipe for disaster. I will let you down every single time because I have weaknesses and flaws. We all do. Some of this is obvious. And you say, yeah, I know that, Sky. Well, I mean, then why do we condemn? Why do we condemn people that we look up to when we find out that maybe they have an aspect of their past that isn't so pretty? We do this with entertainment people, politicians, you know, your mentor, whoever. They tried to do it with Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King he had a great message. Listen to any of his speeches and they'll bring you to tears. And it came out that he had seen a couple prostitutes when he was on the road traveling one time. And it was just like, I mean, the guy's a human being. Does it make the fact that he slept with a hooker, does it mean that his messages are any less powerful? Or should we just throw him away and bash him against the wall and say, fuck him then. He's a fraud. You lied to us. This is what you guys do. This is what cancel culture is. Somehow you're not getting it. Can you look at your heroes in real life with the same eyes that you look at the heroes on TV? Accepting that they have weaknesses. 
Let's move on to the next one. There's this notion of ancestral wisdom. You know what ancestral wisdom is? Let's talk about it. Ancestral wisdom are the lessons, the symbols, the messages that are revealed to us in our traditions, our songs, our artwork, in our culture. This is why it's important to hold on to the traditions of Western civilization because it's a part of our culture. This is our ancestral wisdom. Stop trying to tear down Western civilization. We will fight you. There will come a point when you have pushed us too far. And I warn you. This is a major warning. Not just from me, but from all of us. We will defend Western culture. We will defend our ancestral wisdom. Let's go to the next one. It's Sunday, so we have to ask ourselves about sacredness. What is sacred? The word sacred implies a connection to God, but I really want to talk about it in the terms of what deserves reverence, great respect. Well, one thing that deserves great respect and reverence is truth, the idea of truth. As Stephen Colbert used to say, truthiness, which I thought was a funny term, but I hate Stephen Colbert. You know, I, I shot the TV one time, 38 Special. Bam! Just shot my TV, sitting around, bored, I don't know, watching Stephen Colbert. That's what I was watching. <laughs> For anybody wondering, a 38 Special Hollow Point Plus P bullet will not go all the way through a 50-inch flat screen TV. So, if anybody's ever shooting at your house, grab that fucking TV, put it in the window, bullets won't go through it. <laughs> Justice is sacred. You ask what is sacred, truth is sacred, justice is sacred. Truth, justice, and the American way, goddammit. That shit's sacred. You know what else is sacred is love. Love is sacred. These are things that deserve the ultimate respect. What's sacred to you in your life? Is anything sacred to you in your life? Or are you just living some shallow, meaningless, purposeless existence? If you feel like you're living a meaningless existence, find some things that are sacred to you. Start wondering, what is sacred to me? What do I hold great respect for? What's really important? Let's move on to the next one. This is just a statement. I don't need to go into this too much, but I want to get this out there. There's no success without sacrifice. There's no pain without gain. You know, no, no gain without pain. I guess I said that backwards. But there's no success without sacrifice. Think about having a baby. Men don't know. Women, you know this. You want to have a child, you're going to have to go through some fucking pain in the closer that baby comes to actually being born where it's crowning its head and all that. The pain gets more intense. Success to reach a goal is going to take some struggle to get all those gifts that you want, that destiny that you keep thinking about. You're going to have to fight for that shit. You're going to have to go through some hardcore shit. That's how it works. Don't nothing come easy. This leads me to the next one. See, some of these are connected. You've heard this before. The best, thing, the best things in life take time. A lot of people know that. A lot of people don't live it. We're impatient. We're an impatient society based on convenience. Give it to me now. Give it to me now. And the average person, I read this one time, the average person waits in line for a total of four years in their life. Five years, if you count it all up. We want stuff now. I know I do. I don't want to go through all the work to get to my goals. I just want this shit now. But we know the best things take time. Cooking, this is why I'm a terrible cook. Cooking takes time. You want to cook something good, you got to spend the time in the kitchen and cook it. And not only that, added with it, is you have to put in the work in order to be able to do it. I can't just go in the kitchen and say, okay, I got an hour. I'm going to make the best meal ever. 
No, you have to have an idea of how to cook. That means you've got to study. So in order to make that meal tonight, you have to have some study, some knowledge in your memory banks. You have to go to the store, pain in the ass. You have to go maybe to more than one store. Oh God, what a pain in the ass what it is when the grocery store doesn't have what you want, the, the ingredients that you need to make the meal. So then you have to, well, I guess, either make it without that ingredient or change. To me, that's a nightmare. And I'm like, well, fuck it. Let's just go get some pizza. A, a chef is like, well, let's go to the farmer's market. Look. Fucking farmer's market. I don't want to go to no stupid farmer's market, but a, a, a good cook will go through all this and they finally get home and they have their professional set of pots and pans. I got pots and pans I bought from the fucking dollar store. This is why my food sucks and your food is good because you can put in the goddamn work to do this shit. The best things in life take time. You know that as a good cook. Marriage. Your marriage took time. It didn't just end up perfect overnight. That's the, the, this, the French romanticism we were fed, you know, or some of people were fed if they read, in, read into that philosophy. There's a big era of philosophy, the romantic era, and it kind of changed how we look at relationships. So relationships were largely utilitarian up until that point, and they became romantic, this idea of romance. And I'm not bashing it, but anybody knows that a perfect marriage, that one that is just fulfilling on all levels, that takes time, that doesn't just happen overnight. People give up. If, it doesn't, if it's not perfect, yeah, let's just get a divorce. Your grandparents stayed married. Wealth takes time. It's the difference between rich and lottery rich. Knowledge takes time. Let's go on to the next one. Let's talk about pre-harvest rituals. You know, in paganism, pre-harvest rituals were a very important aspect of society and everybody got into it and there would be two if not three celebrations during harvest time. There'd be the pre-harvest ritual, which prepares you for the harvest, and you have an expectation. You've been working hard, not only just working in the fields, but waiting, working and waiting all summer long for this harvest. So you can feed the tribe, feed the clan. And you would have a ritual as thanks. Thanks for what you're about to get. We haven't gotten it yet. We're still hungry. Our ribs are touching, we're starving, we haven't eaten in a while, but thank you for all this abundance. Thank you for how full we're about to be. Do you have any pre-harvest rituals? When you go into your goals, your goal acquisition, your success, when you want to be successful, you're laser focused. You think you're about to grab that brass ring, you're about to become successful, you can feel it, you can taste it. Can you stop for a second and just give thanks? Have a little pre-harvest pagan ritual? Here's the last one. You've heard this before and I'm gonna put a different twist on it. You may not have heard this statement in this way. Some people are seasonal, right? Some people are seasonal. Now, you think you already know what that means. Let me hash it out how I, take this. Some people are seasonal means to me that there's, there's temporary soldiers and there's full-time warriors. There's some motherfuckers that really only put in work half a year for one season. They were really productive during the springtime and then the rest of the year they kind of just fucked off. Take a look at the year that you've lived through. We're only halfway through it now. How much have you wasted already? Are you some part-time temporary soldier, this seasonal motherfucker? You come into battle for a little bit and then you go home. Some motherfuckers are there all the time. We fight all the time, seven days a week, 365. We live in the battle, motherfucker. You seasonal people are always wondering, well, what, did you steal something? Or did, are you, they want like as if we're a bunch of frauds, as if we're, we're stealing greatness. They don't know how we got it. How did you get that? Because we didn't take time off. We're always here. You're part time. That's why my check is so big. Your check is so small. The payoff is different for me. Seasonal people are annoying. Those are often the ones that cry the loudest, whine the most. 
beg for the most favors, have grandiose dreams on the biggest outcomes, and that they put in the most, the littlest amount of work. You don't get greatness with some part-time bullshit attitude. It's all food for thought. Happy Sunday. <laughs>